So that, that's still kind of like, it's fine. Um, so I'll just go ahead. Uh, USB C sucks, okay, for now. Hopefully it gets better. So um, my talk will be on how to choose the wrong footprint. Actually, no, it's on the project that I did that um, the data I'll elaborate on why I chose this title. So it's a very simple project, I think. So, the so uh, this is what I'll be going through, my motivation behind the project, and then what the project itself, and then uh, like some things I'm, I'm doing in the future on the software. So the first, the motivation about this project is, motivation from this project actually came from, uh, uh, when, from 2016, when I was working, when I was watching DEF CON talks. So DEF CON is actually a, a hacking conference, so many people, uh, so many people get gather there to present talks and also attend talks on uh, hacking, security, and other topics in, in that area. And so they also have quite a lot of information. They, their talks are also recorded and uploaded, so you can watch them at home and from the safety of your home. Yeah. And they also so they they, they also they also uh it's very a very good resource for uh. uh information on uh, security. So uh, so one talk that I was watching in trade that was released actually before 2016 was this talk on uh, programmable USB HID keyboard mouse devices as uh, used to attack systems. Using USB HID devices to attack systems. So how USB uh, so USB HID is actually uh, the protocol that your mouse and keyboard both use to uh, communicate with your laptop and so that it's a standard that's agreed upon so that any laptop will know how to use that specific USB mouse. So this standard, so um, like almost all mouse and keyboards use USB HID. So there's also, so this talk presents like an attack, a way of attacking uh, laptops by pretending to be a keyboard and mouse. So, and you accomplishes this using a very simple USB device that just plugs into the uh, laptop and just generates keystrokes. And then from these keystrokes, you can maybe manipulate the computer in a way such that it'll install a backdoor or a uh, or like an, 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 a user behind. <coughs> so another other motivations for this project is that I wanted a keychain, a very cool keychain that was programmable, that would be programmable and have an RGB LED and also be breadboard friendly. And so. I call, so this is what I came up with. It's a, uh, I call it Sky. So Sky is a, uh, basically a very simple USB microcontroller that plugs in. And you can also insert it in a board. So, so, uh, so this is, so I designed a TiCat because it's free and you can, it's, it's a very nice piece of software to use for designing these pieces. Okay, don't mind the USB bus there because it's like, from the new, I opened it in the new KiCat version, then the USB uh, schematic changed. So this is actually from copy, uh, this is actually from the uh, DigiSpark, DigiSparks uh, schematics. So DigiSpark is a very similar uh, USB uh, microcontroller that plugs in your laptop and you can program it using USB. So I chose this, I chose to copy the Digi, DigiSpark because I, in the process I also learned from the DigiSpark and like, uh, how how to uh, how it does the USB without without uh, requiring a USB hardware system, and also it's a very simple uh, thing to start with for me as a as I'm quite a beginner at this. <coughs> so I also chose the 18 tiny because it's very small and and therefore I can fit in that very s nice form factor that I want. So this is actually the Digi, Digi Spark which I based upon like the schematics of my of my PCB. And also, I, in addition to the typical uh, the USB side, I removed the light, uh, the LDR, um, the, L, the, the voltage regulator, and, and instead I have a uh, WS2112 there, and that's connected to the uh, one pin on the AT Tiny, and then there's a jumper there to choose to use it or not. So those who don't know, the best thing you want to do is a, is the is a very nice, very cool individually adjustable LED. So you can you just connect them in strings, and then they'll work for time fine. You only need one data line to send the RGB signals and digital. 
So there's also a very new, there's also a new version which I'm very interested in is the is a RGBW version which includes the white the uh, uh, white LED. So you can do uh, quite accurate color lighting with it. So first, when I designed this PCB, I was start I was thinking some of the one thing I wanted was it to be very small. So I just gave myself first. I started off with the USB connector. Uh, I learned how to draw, draw a uh, custom uh, footprint for the for USB, and then in Kaikat, and then I so I had that have that on top, and then I rounded the corners everything, and then I drew the bottom part, and the this, the reason I chose this is because the uh, the pins the four pins on the either side will be separated perfectly to fit in the middle of a breadboard, so then you can uh, then. You make it compatible with breadboard, <coughs> and also the core at the bottom to um, tie it to, to make it a keychain. And the next thing I went on was to uh, add poor the LED in the center, and so connect and yeah, connect the I mean, like have a USB connector. And then after that, I did the bottom layer of the circuit, which was the was with the LED and other components. So the bulk of the area is actually taken up by Nikki Tiny, and then uh, I just nicely routed everything, and with ma magically it all fit in some way onto this board and in a very compact size. And so if you notice, right, the I put all my beers under the uh, the WS two one two. So that it will actually be hidden from the top of the PCB and makes it look nice and neat. So this is what it looks like. You can see the beers all like the, the, the six, the, the seven beers hidden under the rest of the And this one, this one is slightly sticking out, you can see on the PCB itself. And so this is what the actual uh, the back side looks like. And that's the uh, pin the jumper to jump to handle the other three on the other side. So yeah, so I sent it to Seed Studio, fabricated it. Uh, it came out about it came out, came out really nice. I liked it, and the black I chose black and white so that I have two versions that contrasting. And then I realized after that when I put a eighty tiny eighty five on it that um, it was actually not the typical SYC eight uh, package, but it's actually the elongated version. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> uh, did you get okay. Yeah, and then I ran up, and then I just there's people on uh, blogs saying that you know uh, you should you need to make sure that your pads are longer. I was like, you know what? Um, let's just uh, make this work. So I I I shook it, and then I I bent the pins of the each each tip of the end of the 18 tiny with uh, tweezers, and managed to bend it nicely to fit over. And then I sold it on and it was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I just stuck the lot sold it there. And so it, then it looks like this. So I and so I have the so also sold it on the WS312. And yeah, it is in the box. So I also haven't bought the other components yet. So like some some parts of ship, so I haven't gone on to Actually, doing the uh, other rest of it, but um, but yeah, I went on to program it using uh, Jig here that, that I ripped out from my. Okay, I, I have this WS two one two system that I was using uh, on on my PC to light it up, and then I just moved, took out that thing and I plugged in a few jumpers and then used that to program my uh, program the eighty tiny by using uh, ICSP. So yeah, and I programmed it with a very simple uh, cy uh, color cycle, and then it, it works. Yes, so at least that's the first part of it done. And then yeah, so the next step was actually to shop for the component, the rest of the components. So I uh, I bought the rest of I bought all the rest of the rest of the parts from Red Fortin, the and then per board is about nicely around five dollars. So uh, yeah, most of the cost came from an eighty tiny eighty five. It's like one one dollar and eighty cents or something. So I'm yeah, using a part soon. And then additional 
yeah, and then the next step for this project is actually I'm moving on to software. Uh, so I want so it's supposed to be programmed by USB. So I'm going to flash the micro nucleus bootloader, which is the exact same bootloader that we use on the DigiSpark. And then I'm I'm going to have to write some set programs to uh, control the LED while also supporting like USB functions, which will be probably challenging. And yeah, that's it. So thank you. The boss are actually they brought them today. Do you mean us? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm like they're not dying or something. <laughs> you pass them around. And you're gonna see I have the uh the uh white working one here, it just just does the color cycle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you.